Yeah, baby. First. Hey, Jim. I know it's been a week and I haven't done anything with the motorhome. Uh, my beautiful 78 Bluebird FC31. <sighs> I had to take this last week. Well, let me show you. My beautiful wife, Shannon. She put up with her kitchen torn up for longer than it should have been. So, last week, I put it all pretty much together. It's not completely done. A few little details, but as you can see, uh, I got the uh, porcelain tile floor done. And all of the appliances are back in place. And the dishwasher's in, washer and dryer's in. So, still got to do a new back door and threshold and, you know, work out a few other things. But the kitchen is back in business. So now that that's done, ooh, it <laughs> always speed bumps. Now that that's done, I'm back heading over to the motorhome. I'll have a chance to come and play with it a little bit this week. I still have uh, two major bathroom overhauls that I have to uh, finish in the next, well, the next couple months. But sooner is always better than later. So I will have to go back and do some more tile work and you know full-on bathroom uh, renovation bringing it from 1965 well I always say 1956 but the bathrooms have been done once before so it's not 1956 it's probably actually 1970 when they were done so it's still everything needs to be updated and refreshed and I've already done almost all of the demolition part of it of course so we have couple of shredded bathrooms but I got the kitchen done yay Shannon's thrilled and so am I so it's back over to the motorhome let's see where we left off well there she is as you can see I got her opened up I got her started up she started right up no problem and if you recall in the last video I showed this microwave or what I thought was a microwave and one of you guys commented on it and said maybe it was a convection oven and that they were not common in the early or the late 70s so, uh, microwaves weren't that common because this would actually keep running when the door opened so I come back and I look at it and it's definitely got a browner type of uh, uh, heating element up there and it's got a place for a temperature probe and I look at this door here and it says right there exposure uh, avoid possible exposure to excessive microwave energy so this is definitely a microwave oven uh, performance standard for microwave ovens oh I need to clean my fingernails <laughs> so I think today what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually do a definitive test I'm gonna put a cup of water or something like that in here and then run this thing and see if it, it didn't seem to heat up the, the food I put in here once before or what did I put in here I don't remember what I put in here but it didn't seem like it was working so let me try that again with something for real and see if this thing will work I have this plastic uh, cup about half full of water so let's give her a shot here so we want high not the browner we want okay seems to be going the light came on for cook got the timer going uh, looks like the light came on in here I'm gonna let it uh, cook for a little while and see if it warms up our water making some funny noise I think it might be the uh, the timer motor you hear that okay let's see oh it did shut off the cook function when I opened it oh it does work <laughs> and it is a microwave hey 
Cool! I don't have to replace it after all. I guess I just didn't know how to operate it properly. So it does shut off. It doesn't uh, dosha with a bunch of microwave. It just, the light stays on inside. So, but it's definitely uh, doing its job. It heated up that cup of water in like a minute. So, and it's got a build date on it of, says manufactured November 1977 by Thermador Los Angeles. <laughs> and it still works. Cool, or hot I should say. Today I'm going to show you how I'm transforming all of these fluorescent fixtures. There you can see one here, one there, one further up. There's three along here. And I'm converting them from fluorescent to these LEDs. Let me unwrap this. So this is my LED tube, which uh, I think we got them on Amazon. And you see it's got the regular two pins, just like a, a regular fluorescent does. The difference is these two pins have nothing to do with the electricity, uh, unlike a fluorescent. This one, the uh, electricity has to come in through this plug, and you got to go directly to the 12-volt system. So we basically are going to eliminate the internals. You don't have to take all the internals of the fluorescent out, and by internals I mean the ballast and the igniter, the starter, all that stuff. Um, I'm going to remove some of it just because it makes it easier to get back to the original 12-volt inlet line. But then uh, when you snap it into place using these uh, pins, they're just there to hold it in place. They have nothing to do with the juice. So I got a flexible tip for my screwdriver so I could reach up in there and be able to remove all the screws without uh, killing myself or using a tiny little stubby screwdriver and doing it by hand. More good news. Uh, while I was idling her and uh, him, <laughs> his name's Larry apparently, uh, I was idling him and letting him get up to temperature. I was playing around with some switches on the dash where it said front AC uh, and a fan speed and the switches were kind of funky. They didn't quite they didn't really want to switch. They were kind of jammed up. But I did suddenly get the one for the right AC to click on. And I could hear a fan going. Hmm, okay. And I played around with the left AC switch for a little while. Finally get, got it to switch to a fan high position. So I got both sides of the front AC to come on. And the air vents are up on top. And it actually felt like after a few, uh, a minute or so, it started blowing cool not ice cold but it was definitely blowing cooled air it certainly seems so it seems like the engine air conditioner um, seems to somewhat work it might need a recharge i don't know and i've got this uh ceiling unit going that's what you can hear and it blows ice cold it's wonderful works great um, i'm gonna have to take apart that rear one one of these days and figure out why the blower on it doesn't work um, hopefully that'll be, I don't know, something simple. I'm hoping it's maybe like a fuse or, I don't, know. I don't know. I'll have to open it up and see, but hoping for simple. So anyway, back to these lights. Okay, I couldn't really find a good place to set up my camera where I could have it, where it could watch as I'm doing what I'm doing. So you'll just have to trust me. I'm using the flexible tip and removing those four screws on the covers up there. I'm going to take off all the covers. I have all the covers off. I have all of the tubes removed. And you can see the tubes went right in there. And so I have to find where the original 12 volt comes in. And that, uh, so I can cut any of this stuff out of here and it, it doesn't matter. I can just cut away. The only thing I need to leave in place are my two uh, mounts. So I mean I could get rid of this wire here, uh, which I probably will. Um, let's see here. So inside here I gotta look for the two wires that come through. Okay so you see the two wires coming in from outside. There's a uh, looks like white with a red stripe and a black one. And those are the ones that we want to hook our 
uh, new wiring harness into. Let me show you that. This is the harness that comes with uh, the, the tubes. Each tube comes with its own harness, but each harness is capable of plugging in two tubes at once. So we're only going to use one of these two plugs. And I'm going to cut these off probably right about here and get them ready with a uh, solderless connector. So what I got to tell you here is when it comes time to do this kind of stuff, you got to buy decent uh, tools. You know, you can go to Harbor Freight. Oh, <laughs> my uh, camera mount keeps flopping around. There we go. Uh, you can go to Harbor Freight and you can buy a crimping tool and that kind of stuff from them. And they're just garbage. They're just garbage. Spend some money like these Klein crimpers. They work great and you're going to have to probably spend 20 or 30 bucks to do it. But it's worth it because the sh crappy uh, Chinesium crimpers, they just don't work. And the stripper like this sure makes things easier. So I'm going to use these solderless connectors. And when I get up inside the light, this will go on super easy. Now remember with this harness here, the red side is positive and the white side is negative. Oh, I have tremors. I'm sure everyone's probably already noticed that. Can't do anything about it. But it makes putting these things together a little bit trickier than you steady-handed folks. It's excruciating, I know. Okay. So there. We've trimmed off our harness. We have the two uh, solderless connectors ready to go. So I'm going to go up into that housing and cut out the crap we don't need after I throw this stuff in the trash and put in our harness. All right. You can see that I have cut out all of the extra wiring and a bunch of the electronics and stuff that were there and all I'm left with are the two wires coming in from outside on this one the black is the ground the white with the red stripe is the positive so I'm gonna take my harness that we just made up and put them up there and crimp them on with my Klein crimp tool okay we're crimped in and I plugged us into our uh, LED tube. So before I button it all up, let's turn it on. And make sure it works. It works great. And there it is. So that's how it goes. I'm going to pop that back in place. So these, uh, these pins, you can rotate these pins so the orientation of the bulb is correct. Since it's, uh, you know, not a full all the way around lighting it directs it just down so these lights use less than half or about half of what the original fluorescence did and here's a quick look at a comparison of what they look like oh not that one that one so this has been converted this is not obviously that tube's having some problems but they're quite a bit brighter and they use about half the energy. So, good deal. I'm going to do this one as soon as I finish those other three. Hello. I got all the lighting done. That side's done. This side's done. Everything works good. Bathroom's all done. Ah, where? Now, both of these guys are nice and bright. Sweet. Okay, so that's it. That'll be it for today. Thanks for watching. I'm probably going to come back over here tomorrow and keep doing stuff. Maybe I'll explore the water. Maybe I'll do the propane. Maybe I'll look into that uh, battery charger that seems to be missing or not working. <laughs> we'll have to see. Maybe I'll get a new phone case since this one's all messed up from, I don't know, being made in China, I guess. 
Thanks for watching. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs>